unpleasant picture with the man throttling the other man. There'll be more about that in the sermon today. Um, And then on the inside, we look to the prayer of the church. There are new names that are listed that uh, we will pray for today, and I encourage you to pray for during the week. And uh, we have additional, an additional name, uh, William Brooks, that's Gail Heimsoss' father, will have uh, surgery this week, so we'll include him in our prayers. Are there others we should be praying for, too? Okay. Um, also to announce today that uh, the Agape group is sponsoring a door offering, um, encouraging a door offering, I should say. And that door offering is for the Albert Meisner family. I mentioned them last week. There was a benefit last night uh, for the family. They're members at St. Paul's in Stover. Albert was tragically killed in a car accident, and his family uh, is is, um, in need of help. And so if you could, at the end of the service today, if the Lord would lead you to do that, uh, why don't you uh, help the Meisner family in that way? This coming week, uh, Connie wanted me to announce that the church office hours are shortened a bit. Um, She'll be in the office Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday has Friday off. So anything that needs to go into the service folder, make sure that uh, that information is provided before Thursday. I also want to announce that the children's Christmas Eve program is right around the corner. We're just about to uh, uh, embark on Advent. And so preparation for Christmas will take place, and that's going to begin on November 30th, so spread that word around. Do you have any other announcements we need to make? I just want to say that uh, I have, uh, Pastor Rotman uh, is taking some vacation these next two weeks, and he asked me to um, lead their divine service uh, in Versailles, today and tomorrow, uh, today and tomorrow, today and next Sunday. And so right after the final hymn, I'll be exiting. So I won't get to shake your hand. I'm sorry for that. I always look forward to the opportunity to see you after the service. So the next two Sundays, I won't be able to do that. Um, But I pray for God's blessings for you in the coming week, and we'll look forward to seeing you, hopefully many of you, and the opportunities we have during the week for Bible study and the like. This is the 22nd Sunday after Trinity. Let's begin this morning by singing hymn number 606, I Lay My Sins on Jesus.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men, we praise Thee. We bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, Receive our prayer, Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, 
with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading appointed for this 22nd Sunday after Trinity is taken from Micah, the sixth chapter. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? This is the word of the Lord. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. For the Lord has commanded the blessing forevermore. The epistle reading is from Philippians, the first chapter. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, 
And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
in Jesus' name. Chief of sinners, huh? Did you mean that? Are you the chief of all the sinners? Couldn't you take a look around the room and point to someone else that's a little worse than you? Let's try that. Everybody point to someone that's a little worse than you, a little more sinner than you. Well, it sounds foolish, but it's often the way we think. I'm not as bad as the next person. There are sinners that are a whole lot worse, aren't there? But what if we truly believed that we are chief of sinners? And that our only hope was the one who came to deal with our sin. In fact, that is how our God would have us think, each one of us, individually, that we are the worst and that our only hope, our only help, our only true joy is Jesus. That is why he came. That is why God the Father sent his Son into our flesh. He came to rescue us from ourselves. He came to rescue us from our sin and our death. And we are all sinners. The proof of that is our death. Only sinners die. Everyone dies. We're all sinners. To be a sinner is to be against God. To be a sinner is to do as our first parents did in the garden, to reject God's word and so reject God. By our sin, we reject his word and we reject him. By our sin, we also hurt others. Peter wants to know if seven times is enough. Lord, if I forgive seven times, is that adequate? If we get to eight, can I tell him to just go take a hike? I'm not going to forgive you anymore. I'm done. Seven times is the limit. What does Jesus say? I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. So 490, right? 490 times. You get to 491, you can move on. You're done forgiving. So we have a tendency to think. But let's think about that with respect to ourselves. I don't know about you, but I have sinned, I have rejected God, I have rejected His Word just a few more times than 490 in my lifetime. And my God, my Savior, my Jesus always forgives me. I return to Him in repentance and in faith And he speaks to me, your sins are forgiven. He feeds me what I desperately need. And what I need is forgiveness. The heart of our Christian life, the heartbeat and life of our Christian life is forgiveness. We cannot live without forgiveness here and certainly not live forever after our death without the forgiveness of our God. You see, Jesus doesn't limit, it's it's ridiculous to think that Jesus limits forgiveness to 490 times, but rather he would forgive us to the very day that we die. And that's why he tells the parable, therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. Kingdom of heaven, when we hear the word heaven, we often think, well, that's where Jesus ascended to, so it must be up there. But you see, Jesus is not talking about up there. He's not talking about after death. When he says kingdom of heaven, he means that the king has come down, that Christ the king has come into our flesh, and then he's brought heaven down to earth. Heaven and earth come together where Jesus is. The kingdom of heaven, the forgiveness of sins, Sin doesn't go on up there. Forgiveness is not needed any longer up there. The forgiveness of sins happens here. 
It happens especially in the church and from the church. And that's the parable that Jesus tells us today. The kingdom of heaven is here. This is where forgiveness should take place. And it does. Because you see, the master, the king, is here to give that forgiveness. Jesus comes to settle accounts with his servants. He calls us all to account. He calls us all to confess the truth. I, a poor, miserable sinner, chief of sinners, each one of us can say that. Not looking outside of ourselves to, to determine if someone else is worse than we are and God needs to focus his attention upon them, but rather to look at ourselves and to confess the truth. We are sinners. We are indebted to God. Jesus comes to settle accounts and he calls us before him. He calls us to come in repentance for our sin and in faith that looks to him. And that's exactly what this servant did. When the servant was called to account, he came and he kneeled before the master. And he says, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. The foolishness of that was he could never pay what he owed. This amount that is named here in the parable is an amount that he could never in his lifetime pay it back. It, in modern day terms, it amounts to millions of dollars. It would, uh, I heard the figure the other day, it would take 800 years to pay back this amount according to the standards, the monetary standards of that day. There's no way he could pay back this amount. The good thing is, he says, have patience with me. But what does the master do? out of pity. And we often hear that word used with respect to our Savior. Uh, it, it's a word that means compassion. It's a word that means um, the ultimate love. Um, I, and I love the Greek word, it's splanknizomai. It comes from the belly, this kind of love that's given to this servant. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. This enormous debt is done away with. It's, it's taken off the books. He's free. You see, that's what forgiveness is. Our Lord gives us forgiveness so that we can be free again. We can be at peace. Peace with our God. And peace with each other. But it's the other, especially in the parable where everything falls apart, where we get this elegant picture that we have on the front of the, of the announcement folder today. This man has been freed from his debt. Now you would think he would, he would run away and he would run up and down the street and say, I'm free, I'm free, no more debt, I'm free to live. And he runs away, but he doesn't do that, does he? He runs to one who has a debt with respect to him. And it's a lesser debt. It's a debt that can be handled. It's a debt that can be paid back. And he grabs him by the throat, literally. And he begins to choke him. And he says, pay what you owe. And his fellow servant did exactly what the forgiven servant did before his master, his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him and said, have patience with me and I will pay you. And he refused. And he went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw it, they went back to the master and they told everything that had happened. The master called that forgiven servant into his presence again and he says, you wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt, which was never going to happen. And then this last sentence from our Savior Jesus. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. 
Yipes. So how forgiving are you? Can you think of anyone that you'd like to throttle? Someone you'd like to get even with? Someone that you'd like to bring a little bit vengeance on? Last night, someone came out of the service and pointed to that verse and said, this is a hard saying. And it is. We get hurt by others. They sin against us. They do evil. And our natural reaction, what flows from our heart, because Jesus says what flows from our heart is all kinds of evil. Remember, he said, it's not what goes into, the mouth, into our mouth that defiles us. It's what comes out of our mouth that defiles us. And it all flows from our heart because our heart, heart is full of sin and death. What flows from our heart is murder and adultery and fornication and anger. That's what flows from our heart. And so what's natural to us is, I'm going to get even. I'm going to get back. I am not going to forgive. It's a hard saying, what Jesus says. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart, because our heart is not inclined to forgive. It's a hard saying, but it's not impossible. And in fact, it must be possible for us. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And so the effort always has to be made to forgive. But how is it possible? Well, it's only possible in one way. And that is to receive forgiveness. To have our hearts cleansed so that we can give forgiveness. Many times I'll ask the question, Confirmation Bible class, how are we forgiven? And the answer is almost always, we ask for it. Right. That's what the Lord's Prayer uh, gives us to do. Jesus gave us those words, didn't he? And the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. But there's not a period there, is there? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There's a flow from God to us. Forgive, O Lord. I am chief of sinners. Forgive me so that I might forgive. Cleanse me, O Lord, so that I might forgive. But asking, you know, asking for forgiveness, God, God does us one better than just asking for it. When you ask for something, you, you're not sure if you quite have it. I mean, an example is coming up, isn't it? Uh, you're, Maybe your, your children are going to ask you, well, how many presents am I getting? And you say, well, you're getting five. But you see, those presents aren't your presents until they're in your hands, until they're given to you. And that's what our God does. He doesn't just let us assume that we're forgiven. He's to, for sure, he paints the picture in reality, in actuality, in history. He paints the picture of forgiveness. This is where forgiveness is accomplished. We can't do it for each other. God had to come in the flesh to rescue us from our sin and death. This is the picture of forgiveness right here. But this forgiveness flows down to us so that we can say, it's mine. And you've already heard it this morning because that's how Jesus gives forgiveness. After he was resurrected from the dead, Jesus gathered together his apostles and he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. This is John chapter 20, he breathed on them the Holy Spirit, and he, and he said to them, whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And that's what happened this morning. We come confessing that we are poor and miserable sinners, and then we hear that word of forgiveness, and that word of forgiveness is the same word that the Master speaks here. Your sins are done away with. The problem is we're still sinners in this flesh. We are by nature sinful and unclean. I've, I've often used the illustration that 
No, no sooner do we hear that word of forgiveness than our mind takes off in sin. We begin to think about, and you know, maybe it's even happened when I've talked about who do we want to throttle. We're constantly full of sin and death, and so we constantly need to be given forgiveness. We constantly need to hear that word of forgiveness as we confess our sin. As, as those who are baptized into Christ, and that baptism too gives us forgiveness, it gives us God's name, we're called to constantly confess our sin. When I do, when I do marriage counseling and when I teach confirmation, I'm constantly telling uh, the people that are gathered there, we need to, when we do wrong, we need to confess that wrong. And when we confess that wrong, then we speak forgiveness to each other, literally actually speak forgiveness to each other. I forgive you. And then it's done. Let's move forward from there in the forgiveness that our Lord has given to us as we give that forgiveness to each other. We come into the church to receive that forgiveness, to hear that word of forgiveness. It's, it's in the, our liturgy, it's in our hymnody, it's in the readings that we hear, it's in everything that we do, that Christ died for us, that he forgives our sins. And in that forgiveness given to us, it fills us up, it fills our heart so that we can go out the door, and jump up and down in joy and rejoicing and give forgiveness to even those that we would love to throttle. We're fed forgiveness. We're attached to our Jesus who comes to us with his body and blood. Here he feeds it into our mouths and into our bodies. Jesus comes into us so much so that as the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live by faith, I live in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We receive that forgiveness so that we can give forgiveness. Jesus says, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart, this is a hard thing. And our only hope, our only help in living in that forgiveness is to receive it over and over. That's your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why we gather together in this place. First and foremost, that's what the church is all about. Can you imagine, can you imagine if we lived in this forgiveness, receiving it and giving it, especially to each other, those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, the world could actually look at the church and say, see how they love one another, rather than taking a look at us and say, saying, see how they pick at each other, see how they argue with each other, see how they disagree with each other, see how they hate each other. Repent. Our only hope is repent, to do as was done, to fall on our knees and to plead for the forgiveness of our Lord. And he gives it to us. He gives it to us so that we can go out and give it. Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Well, you know the number. It's until the day you die. And it's always and only in Jesus who forgives us so that we might live here and live with him forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen. We rise to sing and pray that our Lord would create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. A clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And
and uphold me with thy free spirit. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. All merciful Father, to your care and protection we commend all of your baptized children throughout the world. Defend them against the assaults of the evil one and fill their hearts with your saving peace through the forgiveness of Jesus Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Forgiver of every sin, pour out upon all pastors, teachers, deaconesses, missionaries, and other church workers the spirit of your grace, that they may lead your people into lives of unlimited forgiveness from you, and overflowing in compassion and forgiveness for all. Lord, in your mercy. Ever merciful King, look in compassion on every congregation of your church, and do not allow the evil one to gain a foothold through resentments and hurts that are cherished. But in every place, fill your children with your Holy Spirit, a spirit of gentleness and forbearance, of love, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Ruler of the nations, remember in your kind mercy all who bear public office in our nation. Give them wisdom and courage to serve with integrity and with honor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our healer, to your merciful hands we commend all who are hurt and suffering, afflicted in body and soul and spirit. We will name before you Richard and Elsie, uh, Erna, Denise, Leota, Katie Beth, Roy, Steve, Kathy, Fred, Sue, Paula, 
Orlin, David, Debbie, Marcel, Carol, Pastors Joseph and Mueller, and, and William Brooks. These all are begging, O Lord, in patience for your mercy. We pray that you would visit them in their time of trouble and heal them according to your gracious will, that they might trust always in your unfailing love for them. Lord, in your mercy. Ever-living one, your Son has won for your people the certain hope of resurrection and eternal life through the forgiveness of sins. Receive our thanks for all who have gone to their graves, trusting in such a great redemption and eagerly awaiting his appearing. Grant us our portion with all the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Just wanted to remind you there is Bible class today um, after the service now. A wonderful video tying together the Old Testament sacrifice and the Lord's Supper and then some questions and, and uh, comments together. Uh, pa Mr. Anderson will be leading that, so uh, please go downstairs and, and uh, partake of that. God be with you. Yeah, Errol. Another offering next week? Okay, another, there'll be another offering next week as well for the Meissner family next week. So today and next week. Thank you.